Hey guys, me Donald Chris Tomer here on this Monday. Well, we've got new snow. Our fast-moving cold front uh, raced through Wyoming and also Colorado, and now it's clear. The skies have cleared up here in Wyoming. Beautiful view over towards uh, Cody Peak, Cody Bowl. Rendezvous got new snow as well. Most of the snow up there fell above probably 9,000 feet uh, across a lot of the Tetons. The Wind Rivers got hit. Um, southern parts of Wyoming, and of course Colorado as well. That's where the front kind of uh, rolled through uh, last night with uh, quite a bit of precip right on the Continental Divide, including uh, you're looking down valley here from Loveland, and you can see some of the snow that dusted the high peaks there yesterday afternoon and last night. Now skies have cleared, at least from this vantage point. Here's Winter Park. Um, so down the road, this is uh, just off Highway 40 here. Notice some new snow. There's a little bit of a dusting right here. It was a pretty high snow level in Colorado. It was like 10,000 feet. But you're looking off towards the Front Range High Peaks, towards James Peak and Rollins Pass and Rogers Pass, all those areas. And those places definitely got snow accumulation. I'm guessing anywhere from 1 to 4 inches above uh, 10, 11,000 feet. Um, over there, but a nice view from Winter Park. Here's radar this morning, and again, it is gone. That front, it really only took 24 hours. It came all the way out of Canada and raced down through Wyoming and Colorado, and now it's gone. And, and skies have basically cleared, and so we're looking at dry conditions today across a lot of the uh, a lot of the West. All right, here are my uh, bullet points. Here, here's what we've got on deck. Uh, so we've got another storm system coming around 10, 10, 11, and 12. Now what's interesting about this storm system is this piece right here. So there's a hurricane out in the Pacific. It's going to come north near the Baja, and eventually that moisture will get sucked into the flow. There's a storm system that will hit the west coast and pull the moisture in from Hurricane Priscilla. And so that remnant moisture will get pulled and siphoned into the Inner Mountain, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, maybe even Wyoming into that mix. So that definitely increases the chances of moisture during that 10, 10, 11, and 12 time frame. Here are the best odds of snow. You can see them. I won't go through all of them, but for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, BC, you can definitely see things right here around 10, 10, 11, and 12 for all three of the, all four uh, locations, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and Montana. Um, so that is a really interesting piece of the puzzle as we kind of uh, look down the road. Let me show you water vapor satellite imagery here this morning. Um, so here's the view across the west. There's our departing uh, cold front with the storm system moving away at this point. And now we're in for a little bit of drier air. You can kind of see it right here in the oranges and the reds. That's drier. Even the black color is drier air. But there's a pretty big storm system out here, and that's the one that will move into the west coast and let me move the uh, the vantage point here um, down here you can see it so there's hurricane priscilla right here um, and so what's going to happen is this will track up in this direction and as it does that moisture will get drawn up as that next storm system approaches from the west and that will entrain that moisture and become actually part of the storm system um, so again, that happens around 10, 10, 10, 11, and 10, 12. That will form an entire new storm system. Um, let me just talk a little bit about what to expect here over the next, oh, I don't know, 72 hours or so. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So we'll start this at lunchtime today. And what you see right here are really just the remnants of that cold front, which continues to move south and also towards the east. But look how dry it is behind it. Um, so that's the current setup. Um, let me move this ahead into uh, into time, into the future. All right, here we are. This is early on Tuesday morning. Not a lot happening. There's lunchtime. There's dinner time on Tuesday. Now, kind of interesting. A little bit of moisture right here coming up from the south, maybe on the very tail end of that cold front. There's a little bit of uh, moisture firing up in the afternoon. So that's kind of interesting. All right, let's move ahead. Here we are, morning hours on Wednesday. Uh, here, here's dinner time on Wednesday. Here's the early morning hours on Thursday. Look what's happening. You've got moisture coming in from Priscilla, and you've got a West Coast storm system right here. So the two of them will mesh. The storm will pull in or siphon in all of this moisture from Hurricane Priscilla, and that'll affect 
potentially Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and also also um, parts of Wyoming and maybe even Montana and Idaho, if we can pull it far enough to the north. That would happen again just beyond the reach of this forecast because this is the early morning hours of Thursday, October 9th in that forecast. All right, let's look at the middle of the atmosphere, pressure anomalies here. So this is today, 10-6, Monday. And what you're looking at are uh, the colors represent either higher or lower pressures um, than typical, so lower than normal uh, versus the 20-year average. And so you're looking at an area of low pressure here. There's Priscilla down there. And our departing front is roughly right in here. You can see it's kind of the drop in pressures behind that. All right, let's move ahead. All right, this is Thursday, 10-9. Um, so there comes Priscilla up from the south, that moisture right there. So again, that's going to get pulled in because look, we've got a big storm system moving into the west coast and that will pull it in. Area of high pressure, higher than normal pressure sitting roughly right there across the upper Midwest. All right, last frame. So this is 10-12. This is Sunday. Pretty interesting pattern here. We've got a big drop in pressures over the Carolinas. Uh, so an area of low pressure there. And then you've got, look at what's happened here. This is a big new area of low pressure that's moved in from the Pacific Northwest into the Inner Mountain. Now, if this verifies, it's going to be colder than normal, and we're going to have snowfall across a lot of the Inner Mountain West. And when I show you the 10-day snow forecast, you'll see how this relates to that. There's going to be a lot of snow with this across the Inner Mountain with that. Okay, let me take you to this quick, just a very quick time height. This is for Bertha Pass in Colorado. Um, you're looking at a slice through the atmosphere. So the green is going to be your moisture. We'll start down here. That's the current moment. That's the departing uh, cold front. So that's moving away. A little bit of drier air behind it. And then look what happens this afternoon. There's just a little bit of refiring. You may have another inch of snow over the highest peaks this afternoon as that kind of moves through. And then look what happens behind this a massive area of dry air moves in behind this. So we're going to have at least a few days worth of dry air before we have to deal with that storm system on probably 10, 10, 10, 11. All right, here's the, uh, the snow plume for Jackson, Wyoming. And look what it does. This runs us all the way out through October 21st. The snow begins to ramp up right here around October 11, 12, 13, 14, and beyond. And this generates about six inches of snow in the town of Jackson. So this is not some high, obscure peak. This is right down into the valley floor. So that's that active period. If we can pull in the moisture from Priscilla, bring in a storm system, cool it down, this is the, the net effect we're going to have. You can see it on the 10-day snow forecast. So you've got snow in Colorado, got snow in Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and then snow all the way up into here. Look at all that snow in BC and Alberta from that storm system further down the road. That's the one that's like 10, beyond 10, 12. Um, and, and so, I mean, that's a, that's a fair amount of snow for a, a lot of the Intermountain West. Let's just do a little bit of a, a zoom in here into Wyoming, Montana, Utah, Colorado. So, I mean, any anytime you see these, these magentas or these pinks, that's over six inches of snow. So there's a lot of areas that are showing over six inches here on the 10-day snow forecast. For example, up here in Big Sky, Absaroka Beartooth Wilderness, Yellowstone, parts of the Tetons, parts of the Wind Rivers. You've got some of the mountains of Colorado, the Central and Northern Mountains, showing over six inches. Not quite to six. This would be under six inches for the High Uintas and also the Wasatch. But that's a pretty active pattern there. And it doesn't all come at one time. Remember, there's at least two storm systems here that we're talking about. The next one's 1010. One more zoom. This one's into uh, Colorado here. Um, so 10-day snow forecast. Most of the snow is north of I-70, which runs right around there. So most of it's north. There's a little bit down here over the southern mountains as well, but that's probably under six inches. Um, so it looks like with this storm track, most of the moisture will come a little bit further to the north, but then there's that other storm way down the road, which will help to accumulate snow in a lot of these areas. All right, we'll end on this snow plume forecast. This kind of tells the story. I mean, things start to really um, turn more active and the, a little more energized as we get past October 10th and 11th. And again, that's Jackson, Wyoming. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.